Morning all. Yesterday was the clash of the titans, Russia against Armenia. Hugely strong teams. Vladimir Kramnik playing for Russia on board one, FIDE 2797. Against Levon Aronin, who's having a fantastic tournament, 2816. Kramnik's tournament, um, he's had four draws so far before this game. Um, Aronian's won quite a few, he's won about three. So, um, let's see, uh, Kramnik playing white, always a very dangerous opponent though. He plays d4, and we see the Slav defense, which is a very popular variation at the moment, at Grandmaster level. Knight c3, knight f6, and we see a, a move which um, is is doesn't look particularly interesting, but um, it does promise white sometimes a very annoying uh, positional advantage, long-lasting positional advantage. And that move is c takes d5. Okay, so with c takes d5 and black playing c takes d5, the structure is clearer. Okay, it's a symmetrical pawn structure on both sides at the moment. And the key aspects are like c5 and e5 from a white point of view and c4 and e4 from a black point of view. These are key outposts in this structure to look out for. But for white generally, the queen's bishop is also usually going to play a better role than this bishop because there's a tactical liability on b7 with white's initiative. So this move, bishop f4, uh, black cannot easily play bishop f5. He plays actually knight c6. And we see a slight difference in position now after e3. We see now actually a6 being played. Okay, it rules out bishop b5s, but as my good friend Chris Chess explains, uh, recently mentioned in uh, in my Fisher's least memorable game video, with bishop d3, he he said he was winning a lot. It's a comfortable uh, position with bishop d3. Uh, you're stopping uh, bishop f5 usually, and in fact, White does play bishop d3 here. So a6, I mean really, a6 now, if we look at this outpost square c5, if a knight goes on c5 later, or even a5, a6 is not helping, because it will make b6 harder, if that's more of a liability. And it's also, of course, you know, it is weakening simultaneously, you know, some dark squares. So let's have a look, after bishop, G3, bishop d3, white has here a comfortable position. What can black do in this position? He plays actually g6. Okay. And now we see h3 ruling out bishop g4. So there's one question there actually already. Uh, is bishop g4 possible here or is that is that answered with queen b3? He's, bishop g4 is not really mentioned. Queen b3 might be a powerful move in this position. Okay, but it might be okay. There's some interesting ideas. Rook a7, knight a5 from an engine point of view. It's I guess it's theoretical, so let's not dwell too much on this. G6 was played, and we see h3. And now bishop f5 offering double pawns, and it would give black some dynamic compensation. But actually that's just ignored. Uh, white doesn't double the pawns here. It just plays knight f3, and allows the exchange of light square bishops. But each of white's moves, they are pointing now this bishop across those dark squares and the grip on c5 and e5 is potentially going to be increased with some quite easy to play moves. Black plays bishop takes d3, so queen takes d3 after bishop g7. On the, the bishop finchettoed here is also less relevant for controlling some key dark squares. If it was on e7, it would have more influence on the c5 square. On g7, you could argue it's, it's biting on granite here in the center. Both sides now castle. And then we see the logical move, rook fc1. Just simple ideas here are emerging, like knight a4 to c5. In fact, after e6, knight a4 is played. Knight e4, okay. Knight c5. Okay, one outpost piece is replaced now with the rook. 
and then we get the doubling of the rooks. And Ronian, you know, he has actually a passive looking position. White has a lockdown on black playing e5 at the moment. Pressure on the c file. But this c5 rook, um, could, could it be better for a knight to be on c5? So the, the routing maneuver relevant would be something like this. White plays a3. The bishop does kick the rook now. Okay, it has now got some influence over that square. Now f6, as though black might be interested in the future in e5, but the other idea, maybe g5s. And just to rule out knight e5 from white means that this knight might be freer to move. Knight d2, which is heading for that c5 square in some variations now. Bishop d6. Okay, with the pieces coming off, you might think it is a draw more and more likely, but white has that nagging advantage in this position. If we do an engine evaluation here, just briefly, it is a slight advantage for white, a slight nagging advantage. I think one of the things that happens with these exchange variations, whether it's like the exchange French or, or this, this variation, the advantage is is often um, more carefully preserved, more easy to preserve as white, the nagging advantage, and that's quite evident here. So bishop takes d6, queen takes d6. White's advantage mainly lies in this c5 square at the moment, and he maneuvers for it, knight b3. And after rook c7, knight a5 is played. Not knight c5 actually, knight a5. So it's using that pin. Uh, let's see, is knight c5 playable as well actually? Knight c5 is mentioned, h4 is mentioned, rook c3 on brief analysis. Knight a5 is also a move as well. And actually in the game continuation here, this is interesting, rook a c8 uh, was played here. And we get this very, very powerful move here now. Which um, you may have spotted. Okay, um, I'll give you ten seconds to see if you can uh, find it. So, what did Vladimir Kramnik play here? Ten seconds, starting from now. Okay, he just dismantles Black's little pawn island on the queen side with knight takes b7 and introduces. Um, a couple of pins simultaneously at the same time. After rook takes b7, there's not too many choices with rook b7 because actually the queen's attacked her. And there's nasty pins uh, here. So rook takes b7, queen takes a6, so immediately threatening like rook takes c6. Um, not too many choices for black in this position. If rook a7 is queen takes c8, check. So the rook b c7 is played. And here, okay, he sacrificed the knight, and you might think, then what? Well, simple move. I wonder if you can spot it. The knight's pretty tied down at the moment. There's, there's a pin here, and there's pressure on the c file. So what does white play here? 10 seconds? White plays in this position b4, so he's simply threatening b5. Okay, queen d7, which gets out of this lateral pin. And now, white creates that c file pin uh, quite ingeniously on c7 in this position uh, by playing the move queen b6. If he plays the move b5, that might not be as strong because knight b8 might be a reply. Although it is given by engines as, as quite good as well. I was just wondering about knight b8 here, but actually knight e7 is mentioned, not knight b8. Knight b8, and oh, there's queen takes c8. 
And this is this is all over because White's going to get that queen back with advantage. So Queen takes c8. So knight e7 though would would preserve c8. It's protecting c8. But even in this position, there's an advantage for White. Even in this variation, um, apparently it's slightly better for White. But that's more, much more complex. The way um, it was played, this is, seems to be a killer move. This Queen b6 here. And it's the engine recommended move, just queen b6. And you might think, okay, hang on, what about rook b7 here? Is rook b7 possible? Let's just check this out. Rook b7 in this position. Again, there's this, this neat idea of exploiting the second rank of the king here. Rook takes c6, surprisingly. Rook takes check. And the queen's going to be uh, skewered with advantage. Either rook will do, I think. Big advantage, just two pawns which he's collected. So this is really nasty. This move, Queen B6, simple, powerful move. Um, well, not so simple if you, you have to take account of all the variations. But um, it leaves Black totally uh, struggling in this position. So it's like a C. It's turned into a C file disaster. This game. The knight's kind of a helpless victim here. Queen e8, and now b5. Okay. And and this is a surprising continuation because it looks as though, hold on, has Aronian's ace been revealed? About knight takes d4 for knight e2 check. So we see knight takes d4. But there's a flaw in this. It looks as like it's rebounded tactically on white, but actually the rebound tactically on white is rebounding on black at the end of the day, which is a common expression, by the way, in Big Brother. At the end of the day here, let's see what happens. After this long transaction here, rook takes c6, rook takes c8 is played, and now forking to the two pieces with queen c6. This pawn would be unstoppable if queen takes c6. What does black do here? Or in fact, he might not even take the knight. He might just play b6 there. Let's just check the, the strongest continuation. So first of all, if he, if he does take the queen, this pawn is just totally unstoppable. If he doesn't take the queen, it may be that b6 is a lot stronger than queen takes c1. Let's just check this position. b6 is actually the strongest move here. Queen takes c1 might be actually difficult to win because losing that b5 pawn is it's a draw, I think. We drawish. But here, just b6, come, you know, that pawn is huge now. Then, then b7, it's, it's, it's all over. Okay, that will be winning. Just So that idea of just getting that tempo, really, for b6. So. In this position, you know, b6 is still huge now after queen d8. b6, same, same as that. Not taking the knight, it's not needed. And we saw now here, again, the pawn is formidable. So check, and the pawn, you know, it would be queening here if, it, if black took. So he can't take here, he plays king e8. And here, white wants to be able to play b7 and the queen to support b8. So he actually plays queen a7. So immediate now, threat is b7. Black's had it. d4. It's hopeless. b7. It's just stunning. It's absolutely, in a way, this game is stunning because it shows with such venom the, these exchange variations um, are you know they have this capacity uh, to create a really torturous nagging advantage um, so no wonder it's one of um, chess explains favorite <laughs> variations against the Slav this has been demonstrated as, as the top highlighted game of the Olympiad now this clash of the Titans Kramnik versus Aronian featuring the exchange Slav. Uh, it's it's 
it's crystal clear strategy and perfect you know tactical implementation after actually based on uh, you know the c5 square this game if it, this is a such a powerful c5 square and c file demonstration actually against one of the strongest players in the world at the moment being defeated with this uh, this approach just knight a4 doesn't mind one pair of knights being exchanged the other knight comes for c5 but actually okay we have this question about is knight a5 just as good as knight c5 knight c5 would be same sort of tactics with knight takes b7 or is there any, is there any advantage over over knight a5 to knight c5 knight c5 here what would black do there's there is the threat of knight takes b7 again black has the resource apparently knight a5 that might be a key difference which Kremlin might have um, felt because there's no pin now knight is free to move this knight is blocking its own rook so actually this might actually be stronger let's give this more depth just to see if knight a5 is found it's quite a deep move then actually knight a5 compared to knight c5 is a fantastic implementation in its own right yeah knight a5 at depth 18 <laughs> this is stunning this is stunning um, concept it's it's delicately using uh, the c file pin let's turn that off yes depth 18 finds knight a5 Kramnik's move delicately using the c file pressure providing the resource knight takes b7 and this b pawn is playing an absolutely crucial role in this whole combination it's, this is deep stuff knight takes b7 queen takes a6 so it's not it's not the idea is just to win back the knight the idea is to crown this b pawn in many variations so queen b6 the b pawn's getting one step closer against queening three squares away from queening now and allowing this seemingly uh, dangerous counter tactic from black but this knight on c1 is not that relevant now for the b pawn <laughs> the knight versus the b pawn is emerging as uh, the issue here two steps away from queening king coming to help but now queen a7 pushing that b pawn through it's a beautiful game I think actually it's I hate to say it from the exchange slav which I usually detest but it is a kind of beautiful crystal clear logical game uh, with you know it's almost like faultless play from white but a bit passive from from level and punish for, for playing a bit passively giving white a comfortable position out of the opening comments or questions on YouTube um, the match overall by the way was tied because Grizz took on board two, two seven six three. He, he lost to um, Movsian Sergei Mosian two six nine eight on the Armenian team. Armenian team. The other two boards were drawn. So Karakin drew of Akopian. Javenko drew of Sargassian. So it was two all. But this was board one on round six of the 2012 Olympiad. Comments or questions on YouTube. Thanks very much.